The Romulan Neutral Zone, established in 2162 as a way to maintain peace with the Romulan Star Empire, was something taught in every classroom across the Quadrant. The war between the fledgling Federation and Romulan Empire is a cautionary tale, and the peace which has endured is of the utmost priority. The border of the Neutral Zone is itself a region of various interesting natural phenomenon. Starfleet ships are often tasked with a simultaneous watchful eye and science mandate. Maintaining peace is the priority of any Starfleet officer, and any incident on the border must be analysed and reported. My name is Ensign Laura Reed, science officer on the USS Indianapolis. I actually graduated four months ago. Didn't imagine I'd be talking to Memory Alpha so quickly. Hi, Mum. Hi, Eric. Look, your famous sister. The Indianapolis was tasked with continuing research on a red giant in the Rentax system. The Vigilance had made the discovery, but with other assignments needing a Nebula class's attention, the Indianapolis took over. Wherever the best research is, I'm there. But when Commander Sudan said it was near the neutral zone, I got nervous. My ancestor, Malcolm Reed, served on the NX-01, fought in the war. After reading about Starfleet's new encounters with the Romulans in the last few years, I would have loved to be on the other side of the quadrant, but we were sent right into the action. Six years ago, the Romulans re-emerged with larger and more powerful ships, along with intentions to test the Federation's resolve. The Enterprise, under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, was the first to encounter this new Romulan threat. One thing that always confused me about the Romulans, if the end goal is peace, maybe have a family, you know, be happy, then why throw stones? Why create conflict? What does expansion get you that peaceful cooperation doesn't? I know I'm looking at this through the Starfleet lens, but I want a unified galaxy. Naive, maybe, but I'm happy to dream. That's how we make change. The Romulans' advantage is their cloaking technology, and while other species have the ability, the Romulans were one of the first to develop it. As such, their cloak is the most advanced, and monitoring the border for transgressors is a challenge. I'd love to see inside one of those huge capital ships. Their quantum singularities? That's a marvel of technology. I don't think Starfleet's even close to a breakthrough on that stuff. The Indianapolis was using its dedicated stellar gravimetric scanners when we picked up a signal. It was a low frequency emission, but the star's EM field seemed to have reflected and intensified it. We picked it up clear as day. There are standing orders for any ship near the neutral zone that if any unusual readings are detected, to report them to the nearest ship and investigate with caution. I'd just finished my duty shift and had organised to play Tholian 4D chess with Ensign Talan. She just got the 12th leg expansion. I was going to demolish her. <laughs> I'd felt the jump to warp, but I don't know. I thought we were done with the survey. The neutral zone monitoring stations ensure scanning of the zone is constant and robust. It is a never-ending struggle to ensure technology keeps up with countermeasures. Only once we dropped out of warp, it occurred to me something was wrong. I got up and looked out the window. The kind of distances our ships travel, even at sublight, are vast. But I remember thinking, what's that green shape near the asteroid? Fourth from the right. <laughs> I wish I could have been sure and alerted the bridge. I say that, but I'd never seen a Romulan warbird up close. I was concerned enough to stop playing chess and just keep looking as we approached. The treaty states that no unauthorised ships should cross. The reality of such violations depends on each individual captain. To find an intruder and engage could start a new war. To do nothing sets an alarming precedent. The neutral zone is a dangerous place at the best of times for both sides. Then I knew it was the Romulans. Ensign Reed to bridge. Romulan warbird directly ahead. Visual confirmation. The signal we picked up on was a byproduct of activating a prototype sensor jammer. 
even once we were in the system, the bridge couldn't detect the ships directly in front of us. Luckily, the Romulan ships are so large, and I have absolutely amazing eyesight. Like, if there was a looking competition, I'd win gold. <laughs> okay, that doesn't sound quite as cool as it did in my head, but you know what I mean. The Indianapolis stumbled upon a new sensor jammer test. The Ferengi ship was generating a focused anti-neutron tunnel, which created a blind spot for sensors. If the Indianapolis had not detected this test, the Romulans would have been able to bring entire fleets across the border at will. I accessed a command panel and looked at the sensors. Nothing. So, I grabbed a tricorder from behind the bar and started scanning... the... lack of readings? Is that a thing? I was looking for clues as to what they were doing. That's when... Romulan commanders are trained to leave no evidence. They were in a sensor-dead zone, and as such, they acted without hesitation. Their disruptors hit hard. A Constellation class is reliable, but no match for a ship like that. The second problem is that the Romulans knew that, and were just toying with us. Just disabling systems. I think the Romulan commander wanted a trophy. This wasn't a fight so much as a who can think of a plan first. My mind was going at warp nine, and then I noticed a particle echo. Okay, that doesn't necessarily make sense, but I saw something, and I had an idea. Was it going to work? I didn't know, but the bridge had their hands full and time was running out. So I ran. Captain Keyes and her bridge crew were working to get their warp drive back online. Their plan may have worked, but if the Romulans had pursued them, the outcome could have been very different. I know I should have called it in. I get that. Next time I will. But in the moment, running down the corridor, all I could think of was the solution. And my target, deflector control. I remembered something my brother Eric told me months ago. I tune out a lot of what he says. He's an engineer and sometimes talks another language, but I remembered what he said about anti-neutrons. If you need to nullify anti-neutrons, don't go complicated. Don't try and use a nadion field or lepton pulse. Just tap into the deflector and remodulate it. Work out the frequency, work it out precisely, then reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. If you've dialed in the math, it should work in one. And it did. Ensign Reed's ingenious solution overloaded the Ferengi's sensor jammer and disabled their ship. Because of the reversal of neutron particles, a jet of said particles were released. What started as a sensor dampener was now a giant flare to any ships in range. It was my first battle. Of course I'd done the Kobayashi Maru at the academy. I tried six times, see how far I could get. But they don't tell you about the adrenaline stood at a console for hours. The adrenaline of a new discovery, amazing, but life or death? Galactic consequences? Once the battle was over, I couldn't calm down for so long. I had tingles, I had to go for a run around sea deck. When it finally wore off, I crashed hard. I actually slept so long that I missed my alarm, missed Commander Sudan's comms. Someone actually had to come and wake me up because I was so out of it. I didn't get in much trouble, thankfully. In fact, I got an equal commendation for my actions and reprimand for not asking permission. Not sure what lesson I learned there, except it's a good idea to save the ship. <laughs> so, what happened to the Ferengi and the device? Well, we had backup arrive the next day. We were ordered to keep the Ferengi in place, so the crew used the time to make repairs. The Enterprise was dispatched as soon as the Indianapolis reported strange signals. They were carrying out an inspection of Outpost 11 and were able to respond immediately. With extensive experience dealing with the Ferengi, Captain Picard was able to speak their language. No, Enterprise. We don't want further trouble. Humans are said to have great mercy. We ask for safe passage, away from the neutral zone. 
The technology, however, has been destroyed, and all data are corrupted. Yeah, I didn't buy it either. But so long as the Romulans didn't get their hands on it, I think we all slept better that night. The next day, I was actually ordered to report to the Enterprise. Commander Data wanted to hear me describe my modifications as they were ordered chaos, apparently. <laughs> the Enterprise. Commander Data, I mean, I geeked out. Commander Data? Ensign Laura Reed reporting. What a trip. Data's so smart. And funny. He doesn't even realise how funny. <laughs> I only got an hour on the Enterprise, but I'm inspired. I don't know if I'd ever get a chance to serve aboard. I mean, it may be the Enterprise E before I'm good enough, but you could sense it. The professionalism, the love for what they do. Don't get me wrong, the Indianapolis is a great ship and crew, but I got a peek at the best of the best, and as I said, I'm inspired. The Romulan Senate denies the events that took place in the Rutanic sector. The testimony of Ensign Reed, along with the Indianapolis crew, are the primary record to these events. It was an awakening to the dangers of what we do. But despite that, despite the fear and risks, it's still worth it. I just hope that soon, people like the Romulans will be allies and we won't need to risk our lives like this. We're out here to boldly go, not fire phases. That's my great takeaway. Get the ambassadors back to Romulus or Ambassador Spock. He's meant to be there. We need to move on and work together, not just for the Federation, not just for the Romulan Empire, but for everyone. There are forces in the galaxy who can't be reasoned with, and only together can we keep everyone safe. Wow, well, that wasn't half bad. I hope you were recording that? Yeah? Okay, glad to hear it. The lines of communications are always open with Romulus. It is up to them to take up the challenge and see if another, greater peace can be achieved. This has been a Memory Alpha documentary and we want to thank Ensign Reed for sharing her story.